Chrysler has recalled 1.4 million vehicles because two hackers managed to show that they could easily hack into the car's computerized system in order to manipulate it from a remote distance. Now, those are the two hackers in question here. They wanted to make a point so they could make these vehicles safer. And apparently, they brought this to the attention of Chrysler nine months ago, but Chrysler was unwilling to do anything about it. That's why we're talking about it now that they've made this information public. So Charlie Miller and Chris Valasek uh, basically put this video together to explain exactly what they did and how they did it. Take a look. I can't turn it down. Such a fun video. Ski Logic on oh. Ginger. Right the, the air conditioning is blasting. The music is blasting. And I can't see anything because of the windshield wiper fluid. I gotta do it. Do it. Kill the engine. So we're killing the engine right now. It says park sense. Actually, can't accelerate. I stomped on the gas, but the Jeep slowed to a crawl. So this is in regard to the Uconnect system um, that is basically based on a wireless network, and it's intended to help with phone calls and GPS. A lot of vehicles have similar technology in them. But again, on July 16th, Chrysler uh, released an update for the Uconnect system, but Miller and Valasek noticed that it still had some issues that could jeopardize a driver's safety. Now, I like that they recalled the vehicles, but this is just a small example of a much larger problem. And I remember when a really good friend and colleague of ours passed away in a terrible car accident, um, Michael Hastings, people wondered whether or not his car was manipulated remotely. We don't know, but now that we do know that this is possible, I hope that the car industry does something to mitigate the possible dangers. Max, what do you think? Make your point. Yeah, I mean, I think this is like a scary speed bump on the road to the singularity, you know? I mean, like, we're entering the era of the internet of things, right? Everything is becoming increasingly connected. And I think that some of these things, these you know, tools and devices that we use day to day, are being connected perhaps a little bit carelessly, you know, and this is a perfect example of that. So I think, you know, obviously privacy is a major concern today, but so is security. And this is just like it's it's amazing that it really, you know, came to a head in this way where nobody was actually hurt, because it could have obviously presented a problem down the down the line. Absolutely. Kim, you're a bit of a technology expert, so I'm very curious to see what you have to say. This is by far not the first time I've seen this happen. I I, I think over a year ago I did a story in which some hackers were able to prove that they could take control of a vehicle. Um, you know, take care of how, how fast it was going, if it was braking, if the engine was going. This is not new. Cars are highly hackable and it's not just these Chryslers. And I am happy to see that we're drawing some attention to this issue because it has been, as I said, persisting for a while. You know, what's also really disturbing about this story is the fact that this major car company did not really care to do anything about it <coughs> until the media was talking about it. Oh my God, now we're getting bad press. Now we should be concerned about our clients and our customers. No, you should be concerned about safety from the get-go. Even if you don't genuinely care about people's safety, I mean, this is a huge liability. You would think that they'd be a little more responsible. But again, when it comes to massive corporations, they're amoral. They don't really care about someone's safety. They care about their bottom line. So definitely lots of props to these hackers who made this story a big deal. Here's a personal question, though. What would you rather have hacked, your computer or your phone? Kim, I'll start with you. OK, both are disastrous. Right. I don't have anything I'm ashamed of, but I deserve to have my privacy, and I, especially my passwords, my fi financial information. I wouldn't want to say phone, though, because it's usually it's, it's always with me. Yeah. If you wanted to watch me, you could easily do that. That's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Max, what about you? Yeah, I would say at this point, I would probably rather have my computer hacked uh, because I do mostly work on my computer. If there's ever something that's not work-related uh, and I don't want people to find out about it, I'll do it in private browser mode. Yeah, you know? And yeah. my phone is on me all the time. Obviously, our phones are extensions of who we are, and so I, I just feel like our phones are a little bit more, they have a little more personal information. Yeah, I think that there's embarrassing information on both, which is a great thing to let the audience know in <laughs> case they're looking to hack me. Um, it like, but embarrassing, at nothing salacious. It's more like I like to write about my thoughts or whatever, and that kind of stuff could be embarrassing. But definitely my phone. My phone has the text messages. 
Maybe sometimes I'm, you know, I don't sext or anything, but maybe sometimes sure. I'm like, oh, sure, I, see. <laughs> I don't send naked pictures, let me be clear. But yeah, I wouldn't want people seeing that stuff. So I would go with my phone. But I want to hear from you guys. Wh which would you rather have hacked, your phone or your computer? And also, do you have a Chrysler? Are you concerned about this issue of people hacking into the wireless system and manipulating the car? Comment in the section below. Tell me what your concerns are. I really, really want to hear from you, and we'll see you soon.